Good evening, everybody. I know I'm watching the end of the Pirates game, but there's been other games where they've come back six runs in the ninth inning. So we'll see. Whoops, doesn't look like it's going to happen tonight. Yes, this is being recorded. So we're going to be working on trending now. It just uh, kind of we haven't uh, we've we haven't even started the uh, promos for the uh, the uh, train private training sessions at Cuca Lake. We're already halfway filled up. So if you need information about the private training sessions. Email me. We'll have all the information out here. I think Pat is on vacation this week. When she gets back, we'll start getting the uh, information out to everybody. But it will be the starting August 6th, uh, Saturday, when you come in. I'll be sitting in front of the screens the 7th, the 8th, and half of the 9th. And we fly out the 9th. And if we do the second session, you'll fly in on the evening of the 9th. Sitting in front of the screens on I think Wednesday the 10th, Thursday the 11th, and half of Friday the 12th, and fly out Friday night. So just put those on your calendar and uh, oops. All right, so the pirates lost. Okay, uh, the reason, uh, the reason, uh, I think they're doing all right, uh, Tom, yep, everybody seems pleased with the results. All right, the reason we're kind of backtracking to uh, trend analysis is because it is kind of the core of how you set up your uh, trading portfolio each day, week, or however long you're trading. So the rhetorical question, why is trend analysis important? Because whether you're day trading, swing trading, scalping, you want to know which direction the pressure of the market is moving. Obviously, if you're scanning for positions, and we can analyze the markets in an uptrend, you're probably going to be scanning more for the bullish trades. The market's heading down, obviously more bearish trades. So using trend analysis, the indicator uh, sequence is very simple. As with all our analysis, the signals are the uh, the top priority, then the patterns, where are the stochastics, and then what are the uh, support and resistance level, or your trend lines, your moving averages. And as you can always uh, see in our charts, um, the uh, moving averages that we have in our charts are the 200, the 50, and the 20 simple day moving averages. And then the T-line, our exponential movement average. And what signifies the uh, the market? The Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P. So we always get a lot of questions of why do you use the Dow? There's only 30 stocks in that. Uh, why not use the uh, bigger indexes? Um, and the answer to that is, number one, it only takes a matter of once you can visually analyze what the market is doing, it only takes you five, seven seconds on each chart. So in 20, less than half a minute, you can analyze what the indexes are doing and the uh, uh, the uh, the analysis becomes very simple 
when you can apply all three of those. So obviously, we can see when we're in an uptrend. We can see when we're in a downtrend. Again, the red lines in our chart are the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. And then the most important element for our trading is the T-line, the 8 exponential moving average. So if we can analyze whether trends moving up or down or sideways, it's all important for how we allocate uh, uh, our, our positioning. If we're in a downtrend, obviously you're going to have probably more shorts than longs. If you're in an uptrend, more longs than shorts. If you're sideways, you might have half your positions long, half your positions short. And since we know that trends usually move in waves, we can pretty much uh, calculate whether we're what type of a pattern, pattern we're uh, heading for. Wave one, wave two, wave three. You look at future index in the morning to decide to trade that day. Dan, we look at the pre-market futures to see if it's confirming what we think the market should be doing. So if we think we're in an uptrend and we see that the pre-market futures are showing that the Dow's going to open up 60 points and the NASDAQ up 50 or 15 points, yeah, it's still confirming our uptrend. This morning, as we saw with the market uh, in an uptrend, the pre-market futures were opening up down 60 on the Dow. What told us we probably didn't want to jump right in uh, this morning on any buying. We wanted to see if this was just kind of a consolidation day or whether there was a complete reversal. And that's, that's essentially how we want to use the candlestick signals to indicate whether we're just – there's going to be down days in an uptrend. There's going to be up days in a downtrend. So we can see with a much more clarity what type of patterns are setting up and where our tops and bottoms are and what's happening when we get to the tops and bottoms of a trend because of candlestick signals, the wedge or the pennant formations. So we can tell by the signals that we should be buying and we should be watching to see what happens at the top of a pennant formation. If it breaks out based upon our buy signals, then we know we've got a pretty good uh, oh, uh, probability that there's now a new dynamic in that uh, price trend. And let's see what else we got here. So there's going to be times when we move down. We know we should be short. And there's times when we can start seeing get things get choppy. We don't know whether we should be long or short, so we may have a different approach at that point. But then if they break the channel, now we can pretty much tell what's happening. We're in wave one, wave two, and probably starting wave three to the downside. And the reason that we want to analyze or know what the meaning of each signal or what the uh, – ramification is of each signal, is if we're in an uptrend, and then we start seeing it pull back, a lot of people won't know whether this is now a reversal and we're topping out, but when we use candlestick signals, we pretty much can tell what the nature of this pullback is. Very indecisive, which tells us this probably isn't a major reversal, it's just a pullback during an uptrend. So that the benefit, huge benefit we get is being able to analyze on a daily basis what what each signal is telling us or what uh, series of signals are telling us as far as the, uh, the strength of a pullback. Same scenario. We're in an uptrend and they start pulling it back. What's the nature of this pullback? Very indecisive. And notice where it is compared to the T-line. It's kind of hovering around the T-line. And then what's this tell us over here? That this indecisive uh, stage of the market is telling us it's, it's, uh, that the consolidation's over. We should be in our next wave. Are the signals you are looking at doji candle? Are the signals you are at doji candle? 
uh, Dan, restate that. Uh, yeah, the doji is just one of the 12 major signals. But it, the doji tells us an immense amount of information. There's indecision between the bulls and the bears. So, um, uh, yeah, the stochastics are only telling us where we are in the trend. Remember, we're not buying or selling stochastics, but we're not using that as our lead indicator. Stochastics just tell us what, where we are in the, uh, in the overall trend. And simply stated, what we want to see is a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area. A candlestick buy signal in the overbought area doesn't mean as much or doesn't really mean anything. A candlestick sell signal in the overbought area has a lot more uh, importance than seeing a candlestick sell signal in the oversold area. So the stochastics are just kind of telling us where we are and what the nature of the, the, the market trend is at the time. So if we have uh, a situation where we can't really tell what's happening in the trend of the market, that's why you're looking at just one index doesn't really do us a heck of a lot of good. We can apply the next index. Same thing is uh, happening in the, uh, the S&P. So if we can see that there's indecision between in the S&P and the, uh, the Dow, that pretty much confirms there's really no direction for the market. There are times when we can see that we might be in an uptrend, but what's the nature of this uptrend? This very slow trend channel, so it doesn't really tell us much until we start seeing a breach coming out of one side of that, uh, that trend channel. And the reason we can see a breach is we can see that there was a, as soon as we got to the top of the channel, we can see we had a doji selling off confirmation. And then we had kind of a little evening star breach of the, uh, the support level. That tells us there's more weakness coming into this, this market. Just because we could see a sell signal and a lack of support at what was a support level. So knowing the different patterns also, like knowing that we can't trade this with any once we see that so choppy and we start seeing this trajectory, we know we can't be trading it because we're in a dumpling top, the opposite of a fry pan bottom. But once we realize that, we're not pulling out our hair thinking, oh, man, this looks like uh, it's time to buy. No, it's time to sell. It's time to buy. We can say, wait a minute, we shouldn't be doing anything here because it's probably not going to be a very good uh, – time frame to make money, but we know what the results are of a fry pan or a dumpling top. We can make big money when it breaks to the downside, which is the expectation um, of, the, uh, of what we should be looking for coming out of a, a dumpling top. Uh, let's see. I would like to keep charts of the diamonds, cues, spies on the market throughout the day. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not difficult to even uh, during a market trend to even play off the ten minute chart every day. Uh, Ram definitely, um, and that's if you see a big price move in a, a stock, and I'm trying to think of which ones. Uh, You got, you got a very simple analysis. If there's a big price move and it's moving away from uh, – uh, I'll pull this up. No, I can't pull that over like that. Well, should they? Yeah, if you see something like this, start going to your 10-minute chart. That's where you uh, – to get a much much more clarity as to what's going on on an intraday basis. Where is the breakout entry of a dumpling top or a fry pan bottom? 
You can see where the beginning of the fry pan bottom was, right here. Then you can see how it started uh, showing a very strong, or showing a very indecisive rounding top. You could be starting to short here, may have covered the shorts, but the longer this keeps rolling over, and then definitely right in here when it started breaking down. So what we're looking for, if this is the area where the dumpling top is starting, we're looking at the same area over here as long as that downward trajectory uh, stays in, in, the, in effect. And I'll pull up some of the uh, uh, fry pan bottoms. What time frame do you use to enter a day trade on a YM? Uh, Javier, that's up to each individual, depends on how fast you're trading. I used to trade the E-minis off a one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart frame or uh, chart combination. All depends on how fast you're trading. You might use a five-minute, ten-minute, thirty-minute combination. Um, uh, Paul, that's a whole different topic, but just to to give you a real quick, simple uh, thumbnail of how to uh, uh, allocate funds, the biggest problem that most investors have is their own emotions. So through the years, I've discovered the way to take my emotions out of my trading decision is if I am, if I've got whatever price or amount of money, $100,000 portfolio, a million dollar portfolio, I'll start with a uh, basic allocation to say, all right, I'm going to have this divided into 10 equal dollar amount positions. And the reason for that is, if we're looking at a chart, and it's the best chart in the world that we're going to make tons of money with it, and we're usually putting in, a, uh, let's say, $100,000 a position or $100,000 portfolio, $10,000 a position, and we say, oh, man, I'm going to put in 20000 in this one because it's really good. Now what you've done is you've just changed the parameters of your trading strategy to where you've put your own emotions into or your own ego into that decision. Now what happens is if that trade doesn't work, you say, oh, man, I, I'm too smart not to know this is going to work. I'm going to give it a couple extra days. Keeps moving in the wrong direction, and you're closing it out three or four days later than what you should have uh, closed it out because you had your emotions involved. The reason I keep each position as an equal dollar amount is because even if I think I have the best trade in the world, I put in the same dollar amount because the charts are giving me the probabilities that uh, it should work. And when it doesn't work, I can easily say, all right, close out this position. This is one unit of my portfolio versus my favorite position in the portfolio. So, again, doing everything I can uh, to keep the uh, keep my emotions out of my trades. That's right. Stochastics, uh, uh, remember, we're looking at situations where the probabilities are in our favor that it's time to be buying or selling. And probabilities have a lot different connotation than guarantee that it's time to be buying and selling. So every time I put on a trade, I know that I've got a, probably about a 33 35% probability that trade's not going to work. So when I've already got that set in my mind, that this could possibly have a 33% probability of not working, when it doesn't work, I can say, all right, that was the probabilities, close it out, and move on to the next chart or trade where the probabilities are still two-thirds in your favor. And that all comes part of the, uh, the uh, prospect or the uh, trading perspective of cutting your losses short, let your profits run. Get out of the bad trades quickly, and the candlestick charts will show you when the trade's not working, close it out and move on. And when the traders are working, you continue to hold them until you see a sell signal. Um, 
dividend plays, how do you use candlestick signals? Uh, remember, Kenny, the candlestick charts are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a particular time frame, no matter what uh, uh, what the reason is, whether it's a dividend payout, whether it's no matter what it is, um, it's all going to be built into the chart. All right, so here's what we look at. I mean, when we can see there's support and resistance, we have the benefit visually to see what's happening at the support levels, candlestick buy signals, and where are they occurring? Stochastics in the oversold area. Where is the uh, resistance level? When stochastics are in the overbought area. So if you see something like this, because of the simple analysis or the simple rules built into uh, candlestick charts, we know what should happen after a doji. The price is usually going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if we're up here at the resistance level in the overbought area, one of two things are going to happen. If it opens positive, we know the probabilities are it's going to trade positive. If it does that, it's breaching the resistance level. We stay long. If it opens lower, it tells us exactly what uh, is happening. That was the sell signal being confirmed at the resistance level. So this is not rocket science. The Japanese rice traders have provided us with very simple chart patterns and signals that tell us exactly what's going on in human nature. Uh, and the uh, most confirming, or what I say, the most convincing element of the candlestick charts are that if they weren't signals that were working, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. Uh, and the, not only did the Japanese rice traders provide us visual evidence of when or what should happen at a signal reversal area, but they also gave us the description of what was going on in investor sentiment when it got to that area. So when we got up here and saw the doji, the Japanese rice traders very easily explained this as being a area where there's indecision between bulls and the bears. Sound coming in and out. I uh, hope that's better. All right. So trend analysis is very simple with candlesticks. If we can see if there's a trend channel, we can see every time we come down here to the bottom of the trend channel, there's buy signals and they take it back up. It makes it uh, very easy to say, all right, we're back here to the bottom of the trend channel. What do we want to see? Now back to the question, do you use the uh, pre-market futures to tell you what's happening? Yes, if they've pulled back the fourth or fifth time to this level, and we wake up the next morning when it's trading right on this level, and the pre-market futures for the Dow are down 140 points, then uh, that's telling us, all right, there's a breach now of this uh, channel. There's a change of investor sentiment. At the same time, you can see the trend channel is going on the same in the NASDAQ. And this is where the analysis of the different uh, – oh, man. Oh, Marketing Plus, Yahoo. Um, this is where we can see when the trend is continuing. If we're in an uptrend and the Dow is heading up one day and the NASDAQ's heading down one day or on the same day, it's pretty much telling us that there's no change of investor sentiment. But if we see a candlestick sell signal up here at the top of the channel and they're gapping it down the same time they're breaching the uh, Dow. That tells us there's now a completely new dynamic in the uh, overall market. We want to be closing out positions that were looking looking doubtful. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know why this uh, sound is different. Um, I bought a new headset because the other one was falling apart. So, anyways, um, uh, John, yeah, I've written three books. If I was starting, uh, if I was recommending, I'd buy High Profit Candlestick Patterns. That was the middle book. That that gives you all the meat uh, of the high profit uh, pattern setups. 
Then go back to book number one that was published by Wiley and Sons, uh, Profitable Candlestick Trading. That will give you the whole gamut of the signals um, and kind of the philosophy behind them. Gives you a much more overview or uh, clear overview of uh, why the prices move like they do. And then once you start getting used to uh, the, ch the charts, and what I've discovered through the years is you can teach people how to use the charts to show exactly when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. And even at that point, a lot of people come back and say, I'm seeing everything. I'm just not making money. So that's why I wrote the third book, which is uh, uh, Eliminating Your Emotions Using Candlesticks, because that's, that's part of it. The, uh, the biggest, the biggest uh, bugaboo that investors have in their investing is their own emotions. And candlestick analysis, because the probabilities are built right into the signals based upon the graphics, if you just follow what the charts are telling you, your discipline becomes, your mental discipline becomes a lot more refined. Okay, yeah, penguins are down one to nothing. Um, okay. Uh, Lowry, uh, that's up to each person also, whether you, which, uh, a lot of times any, Thing that's trading below 20, I'm usually buying the stock. Anything above 20, uh, I'm usually buying the options. And the higher the price is, like on Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Tesla, those type of things, I'm trading the uh, trading the options, obviously. And forex, yes. Remember, candlesticks are not the uh, the analysis of now they're losing two to nothing. What's happening here? Um, uh, candlesticks are not the uh, the graphics of a market. Candlesticks are the graphic depiction of what's going on in human nature. So any market that you have that has fear and greed in it, which is everything, they work just as well. The only thing in forex is you won't get don't get gaps or anything because it's trading. Uh, uh, fluidly. So, also, when you're analyzing the markets, you got to remember there's some very simple rules that the moving averages usually act as support uh, uh, resistance. You can, yeah, I've, I've traded forex. But I don't trade forex anymore. I'd rather just trade the uh, stocks, uh, uh, or not the stocks. But if I'm buying the dollar, I'm just buying the dollar. I'm selling the uh, uh, oh the uh, euro. I'm just selling the euro. I'm not trying to offset it with another uh, currency. Would you consider to have? Would you consider to have a chat room for futures? Yeah, we do already, Fran. Uh, we have a separate uh, chat room for our futures, combined with the option trading market. Um, I trade the ETFs, and we'll get to those here in a little bit also. Remember, it's anything that has fear and greed in it. All right, so remember, the moving averages act like magnets. When it comes, notice how when they breached the 50-day moving average, the first thing they did is came back up and test it and failed. Second time, they went through. Now, we can see what happens once it got up here. Lots of dojis in the overbought condition. When they started selling it off, it told us it was time to take profits. But the candlestick signals told us they were still buying coming up the second time. That candle right completely different than the indecisive candles over here telling us that they went through. And what usually happens on a support and resistance level? If a resistance level is breached, They'll come back and test it as support. And what what did we see when it came back and tested it as support? Did a bullish harami. Told us the selling had stopped. We were probably still in a strong uptrend. Uh, let's see. What about with all the market manipulation, Jivo, where I 
got suckered into getting in too late and hanging too late on big news. Ram, just follow the 10-minute chart. It'll tell you when the buying and selling is is uh, uh, coming in or, or out. Uh, Fran, uh, yeah, if you need information on the uh, futures trading room, that's yeah, DJ did it. Uh, uh, Becky, you want to type in Abe's uh, Abraham's uh, uh, link or uh, email? Just email Abraham, and he'll get you the. Uh, uh, information. There you go. Um, I used to do the e minis. I don't do them anymore because I just don't have time. And back when I was younger, which is not too many years ago, uh, I would trade the e minis, but by the end of the day, I just felt like a wet dish rag because I was trading off the one minute, three minute, ten minute chart, and I would leave the whole rest of my portfolios. Uh, Alone because I was trying to make an extra two, three hundred bucks going into the close. Now I trade much slower. I'm a swing trader, and if I, uh, but I will intraday trade. If I'm sitting around and the market's boring, I may flip to a e mini chart or, or I definitely trade the soybeans, cattle, and that sort of thing during the day. So, anyways, once a resistance level is breached, it'll come back and act as support. So if you're watching a couple of indexes, notice how the NASDAQ did a double bottom here, an inverted hammer, a bullish harami, right at the same level, came up, and notice what happened when we got up to the 50. Hanging man, doji, bearish confirmation, and we can see in this case the 20-day moving average was acting as support on these hammer-type signals, taking it back up through. So we can see very visually where the support and resistance levels are. Um, I will right, look at the weekly chart. Uh, if I see two good trades, not knowing which one is the best, then I'll flip to the weekly chart to see which one has the better uh, weekly chart to it. So the uh, support and resistance levels in a trend become very important. If you can see you're in a downtrend and every time you come up to a resistance level, we can see exactly what's happening, especially with stochastics in the overbought area. A bearish engulfing signal at this downtrend back below the uh, 50 and the T-line tells us we want to be back out of this. They tried to bring it up again, and there was our left-right combo. Another failure at the 50 told us we're still in a downtrend. Just gives you much more clarity as to what's happening at the resistance levels. This was, I think, the S and now this was the NASDAQ. Left-right combo, failure again at the same level, and you can see the wedge formation. So if it didn't support here and continue to go sideways, notice what happened when we got back to the bottom of this uh, support level. They gapped it through. How long do we stay short until we see a buy signal and a close back up above the T-line? Um, what? ID the indicator in the overlay on the chart. What is the indicator in the overlay? And here, these are stochastics. My stochastics are 1233. So if you see, obviously, I see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, you're in an uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, the probabilities are pretty strong you're in a downtrend. So Basically, you use the, the uh, indexes. So if we can analyze the indexes with much more clarity, knowing where the resistance is and what the trend is, that gives us a much better capability of scanning for the correct trades uh, uh, oh, uh, that if, if we're in a downtrend, obviously we're scanning for more shorts than longs. Yeah, the blue line in this case is the 50-day moving average. The gray is the 20, and the T line is your uh, uh, this black line. So again, the, the visual capabilities of candlesticks also allows us using the candlestick signals that if we're in a downtrend below the T line, is this a reversal signal? 
Well, it could be. We're in the oversold area, but what's our final criteria? Our final criteria is that we need to see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Yeah, Warren, these are, this is all recorded, so uh, uh, if worst comes to worst, you should be getting this. But if you don't, just email Abraham. He'll, he'll get you the link for it. So, very simple rule of the T-line. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Now, that has, oh, now it's two to two. Boy, oh boy. Um, that has a lot of important ramifications to it. On any uptrend, you're going to see candlestick sell signals. And I used to get whipsawed out but I wouldn't get back into the trade because I was off doing something else. Now at least I know if I see a candlestick sell signal, it better close back below the T-line or you continue to hold it. How many candles do you wait for to enter a trade? Zero. Remember what the uh, whole purpose of a candlestick signal is. It's telling you there's been a change of investor sentiment. Somebody asked me how many... How many uh, what time frame or how many uh, uh, candles before you decide it's an uptrend? And the answer is zero. If I see a candlestick buy signal and it confirms the next day, I'm buying immediately. The gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. And the reason we have the 200, the 50, and the 20 is that's what every major money manager, major money manager uses uh, to make their decisions. Um, and again, this is not rocket science. Investor sentiment works the same way time after time. What we just are looking at it now is in a much more uh, clear format. And all that happened was the Japanese rice traders just made it very simple by telling us where they opened and where they closed. And that information adds a lot more to your chart analysis than, than uh, uh all the uh, the bar charts. Where where is your stop? Oh, a stop is basically if I see a candlestick buy signal, I stay long until I see a sell signal and a close back below the T line. So if I'm looking at something like this where it just closed below the T line, my stop is if they open it lower the next day, I close out the position. They have to open up positive and trade positive. So. The, uh, and the stops are a, a different uh, training session, but it's very simple common sense. If there's a candlestick buy signal, and I'll try to do it here if we can see it, if that becomes my buy signal and a close above the T-line, the Japanese rice traders have a very simple philosophy. If that was the candle that told you the bulls were in control, the bears shouldn't be able to close it more than halfway down that candle, or the bears are still in control. You close out the position right away. Let's see. Do the signals work in the pre-market and after-market hours? Uh, no. Uh, I say no. I don't. Yeah, you can't use the after hours. If there's 4 million shares traded in this stock every day, after hours it may trade. 20,000, and that's usually people trying to get in and out because of margin or something. Um, yeah, use use the charts that tell you where what the money is actually actually doing. So we got very simple chart patterns. When you see a pop up like this, what do we expect? This is what we call the 45 degree, and it has a very simple ramification. You can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. This takes a lot of the worry, anxiety, any emotion out of your trading. This keeps you in trades until it's time to come out. All right, so there I've seen in the past where people are uh, advertising how to trade trend channels. That you can make lots of money when it hits the bottom and goes to the top. The only problem is 
they don't have as much clarity. We can see exactly what type of signals are occurring when we get to a top of a channel, back to a bottom of a channel. We can, again, with you adding the stochastics and the buy signals at a support level, which is in this case the channel, we know that we're in an uptrend until we get back up to the top of the trend channels. That tells us that we're going to top out right there? Definitely not. But visually, when we got up there, we can see in the overbought area, we're starting to see a lot of dojis. And we know the simple rule of a doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So when they start selling it off, that's a good indication. They're not going through that level. Start taking profits and getting ready to go short again. So the trend channels make it very easy. You can tell when to be buying and when to be selling based upon when it gets to that area. Uh, we, we're kind of looking for uh, sell signals. Um, if let's see, et cetera, if it closes below the T line without a sell signal, should we sell, Gerard? If it does that, I usually give it one more day. Because the worst case scenario is if it's not a reversal signal and a close below the T line and it opens lower the next day, I can close it out. I can always buy it back if it comes back up above the T line, which goes into the uh, uh, kind of a perspective of if a trend is in an uptrend, I don't necessarily need to have every single dollar of that uptrend. I just want to make sure I'm in the right direction at the right time. So if there's a 10-point move to the upside and I'm only getting eight points of it, that's fine with me because I just want to make sure I want to be in the right direction at the right time versus holding on to something that might be pulling back some of the, the profits of that up, uptrend. Do bar charts work as well? No, Ram, this is the whole point of candlesticks. Candlesticks were developed by the Japanese rice traders by uh, – let me find a bigger chart – by the information that's given into each chart that tells you when they open it here and close it oh, here, that's a bullish candle. If they open it here and close it below where they open it, it's a dark candle. That gives you a heck of a lot more information um, than, than the bar charts. And I say a heck, an immense amount of information um, of what's going on in investor sentiment. You can always have a day where it gaps up and trades down, but it's up for the day. But it's giving you a lot more information if that's a gap up with a dark candle than what a bar chart would be showing you. Uh, only care about price, no volume. Uh, the only time volume comes into play is at a reversal area. If you see on the day of, the day after, or the day before a huge volume spike, that pretty much tells you what's happened. There's been a major change of uh, ownership. But a lot of people say, well, I want to see the volume go up when the price is going up. Volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. If the price is going up and nobody's willing to sell, it's going to go up on lower volume. And, again, we're not buying volume. We're buying price. Uh, make sure I'm getting all the – so – we can kind of calculate where we should be watching for the next uh, reversal signal. But if we can see a trend channel has developed, we know where to be looking for buy signals, where to be looking for sell signals, where to be looking for buy signals. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to reverse there, but if we do see a reversal signal, we're in early. We, we know immediately that we can start buying instead of waiting for everybody else's confirmation to start kicking in. Do you do any type of scanning? Yes, every night. The formulas are very simple for candlesticks. If you can uh, actually verbalize what the signal is, you can write the scan for it. And our scans are now everywhere. We've got the scans formulas on our website for uh, TCNet, the scans are at TOS, TradeStation, NinjaTrader. They use all our formulas. Um, how does the comment look at the direction of the open? Uh, 
after a doji where uh kevin you you can't you are on a doji yes it could still uh, the only problem with uh Oh, the continuous trading of Forex is that you're not going to have gaps or anything. But it will work. I mean, it works just as well for Forex as it does anything else. Uh, Bruce, I'm a little confused. The bull and bear flag setups, they, they just look like sideways pennants. I'll see if I can find some. How do you scan fine stocks to trade? Very simple. Once the scans are in, all you do is refresh your charts each day. I can find the best trades out of the whatever it is, 10,000 trading entities out there in probably less than three to five minutes each day once the, once your scans are set up. Um, sometimes I can't find your index tickers. Is any reference table? Oh, somebody in the chat room should know that. Uh, uh, both of those questions uh, for TC. 2000 and toss. Um, I don't know the exact links offhand because I'd never have to look for them. Um, uh, Wooj, I use the 10 minute chart as my bellwether chart. And then I flip down to the whatever. If I'm trading soybeans, if I see the 10 minute chart start working, then I flip down to the 5 minute. If it's working, I get ready to buy, and I flip to the one-minute chart to make sure it's still confirming my five- and ten-minute chart. Uh, how many trades are you in at, at once? Usually, if I've got a portfolio of any size, I'm usually in about ten trades. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm all ten long or ten short. I might be seven long, three short, or if it's a real strong market, I might be Nine long, one short. If it's a choppy sideways condition like this, I might be in five long and five short. Which candlestick uh, candlestick patterns do you scan for most often? Oh, there, there's uh, again, there's the twelve major signals, six longs and six shorts, and there's probably six or eight uh, uh, chart patterns. So, I again, I go through a very simple scan. I use TCNet and Metastock. All you have to do is the first scan I do is which stocks had the biggest percent price move today. And I can go through the first 20 charts in probably a minute and a half. But during that time, I'll probably come up with five, six, seven, eight charts that are coming up off of candlestick reversal signals and had a big, big day. Conversely, if the market's heading down, I can scan for which stocks had the biggest percent move to the downside, and usually within the first 20, I'll find three or four trades that look look excellent. But each scan can be done individually. If I'm looking for hammers at the bottom, very simple. I'm looking for uh, uh, my stocks trading in my universe, which is usually stocks greater than five, trading more than 200,000 shares a day. And then I can scan by which stocks are trading below 20 or in the oversold area. And then I can scan by adding the hammer signal to it. So I'm now I've found all the hammer signals in the oversold area. Or the same setup, but with the doji signal, looking for dojis in the oversold area. All right, let me keep, I'll get to everybody's questions. Let me kind of run through the charts just to kind of show that you can set up you can see when a uh, trade channel is setting up, when you get to a bottom of a level, we start seeing buy signals. Good probability they're going to come back up and test the top of that channel. We're looking for the next target to the upside. If we see reversal signals, there's an evening star signal on the Dow and a close below the T-line. Where's our next target? See what it does at the 50, and then notice what happened when it got to the 200. There's your big morning star signal with a doji smack dab off the 200 and a close above the T-line. What's our criteria? We can stay long, or the market's in an uptrend until we see that sell signal and it close back below the T-line. Once it starts trading off, where do you think our next target is? 
they're probably coming back to see you know, test the uh, 50. So anytime we can see support and resistance level, here's kind of a pennant formation. Then look at what happened here. Before they got back to down to the exact bottom, big bullish engulfing signal off the 50. And then what happened when they broke out up here? That told us that this wedge formation wasn't there anymore. There's a new dynamic. Uh, yeah, Chicken Hawk, uh, yeah, that's a very strong price pattern is the J hook. So we're looking for breakouts. Anytime we can see there's a resistance level and we see a buy signal set up, there's a morning star signal. What does that tell us? They weren't bringing it back down to the bottom of this wedge. They've now broken out. That just gives us much more clarity that a new, uh, new price trend is in progress. See a trend channel and they break it to the bottom side. That means we're heading to the downside. We can project our targets much easier uh, also. Oh, we're getting right to the end now. So here's, remember, here's our signal. This is the most important. Where did this occur? Kind of right here on this support level. So this is June gold, and we know that the bigger the signal, the higher the probability there's been a change of investor sentiment. When does it get really confirmed? when it broke through this downtrending channel. So if we're trading stocks in the gold sector, we're looking at things like AU. It also had the best friend signal, the doji gap up, breaking this little downward trend channel. Then they breached this level in the last couple of days. Where do you think our next target is? Right to the top of this trend channel. So that gives us a much more clear especially knowing what these signals are. The best friend signal, if if you're quantifying, and I do have a video someplace that quantifies probably 18 different uh, signals of which ones are the strongest and the best friend signal, the doji followed by a gap up, is probably number one, followed by the left-right combo, a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Uh, John, yes, all, our, all of our uh, charts are our, Books are on the uh, website. We've uh, got some other high-tech uh, products like flashcards that you can keep right next to your uh, screen so that uh, you can learn by using the flashcards. And we've got a two-foot by three-foot glossy poster that every American family should have in their living room showing the 12 major signals. We also have uh, mouse pads with the 12 major signals on. Um, would you use stochastics, divergence, and plan? No. Stochastics are not a, a function of price movement. Stochastics are a function of where the trend is. So the trend can be moving in one direction at one time and start pulling back and starting back up, but not with the same. Uh, uh, same trajectory on the stochastics. Stochastics are merely telling you where you are in a trend. No divergences that, uh, I mean, the divergences in your stochastics mean nothing. Um, are the three recommended? Yes, they're all on the website. If you go to www.candlestickforum.com, go up to the top, you'll see products and services, and you'll see all the video trainings. And uh, uh, all the products, the books, the uh, flashcards, all that type of thing. Now, one of the things that is a benefit as a member is all those training videos are at a discount for members. But more importantly, you need to try to uh, once a week, we'll do a session where it might be a session on stop losses, which is basically the same thing as the videos, just more updated. Um, but when we do it live, you got an opportunity to be asking the questions right there instead of pondering them or trying to find out the questions or answers to those questions later. So there are live training sessions of the same material, just you get them free as a member. Um, use the T line as the middle of the road. Now, the middle of the road, uh, the T line, 
if you're uh, waffling up and down uh, above and below the T line, that means you're waffling. You should, probably shouldn't be there. So, anyways, right now we're we're in the gold stocks because the market's heading up, and as we can see, gold is heading up. So that probably gives a lot more strength to being in the gold stocks, or even leverage it even that much more, like the n nugget, the three. Uh, uh, leveraged, uh, three time leveraged, uh, ETF. And so I trade the ETFs, but I trade the options. So not only am I getting the leverage of trading, uh, the, uh, the three leverage, but trading the options at the same time, which again, if the candlestick signals work correctly, which they do, or they wouldn't be around for 400 years, you could make a ton of money just by seeing when it's the appropriate time to be in and out of positions. Why is AU not an island reversal, island top? Because look where your stochastics are. They're still heading up, and we're gapping up. So it would be an island reversal if they happen to gap it down here, but I suspect when you start seeing, remember, the gaps tell you information. Candlestick signals and gaps are your best friends. If you see an indecisive trading day, a doji, and they gap it up the next day, what's just the common sense analysis of that? That is, after indecision, they've told you exactly with force which way they're moving. And not only are they going to move it with force, it's going to be in that direction. It's going to be a sustained uh, trend until you see a sell signal. Um, for what you use T line. Oh, Bob, rephrase that. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter which way you're going, whether it's long or short. Remember, if you see a candlestick buy signal. If you start seeing sell signals in the overbought area, what do you, where's the price going to move back to? Probably back to the T line. What do we want to see at that point? That it stays above the T line. When it starts closing below the T line, now what's our assumption? If you're closing below the T line after candlestick sell signals, you're in a downtrend. Now you can project your targets. 50 day moving average, which in this case would coincide with that gap right there. So it just greatly improves the probabilities that if you can analyze what the trend is doing and you see a sell signal at the top of that trend channel, you can pretty much project where the target is for the next trade. So anyways, all this is is utilizing the information that's built into candlestick signals and then adding the other indicators to it to tell you improve your probabilities. So before we start doing some live charts, oh, Becky, do you have the link? I think Pat is, we've got 90 minutes of analyzing the market trends for 17 buckaroos. Usually I think it trades for $147, but uh, we make it a special for 17 bucks. And a lot of people always ask, well, why are you selling stuff so cheap if it's good? I think it's great. But what I discovered through the years is, a lot of people know about candlestick signals, and they always say there's too many of them to learn, and they don't always work. And I always came back when I first started asking people on the Internet back in the late 80s, I guess it was the mid-90s when the, oh, the chat room started coming on. I would ask people rhetorically, why isn't everybody using candlesticks? They make so much sense. And the answer was there was too many of them. They didn't always work. And I kept coming back to the premise that if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them today. And there was too many. Uh-oh, that, uh, that didn't work, Becky. Oops. I've done something pinging here.
Ah. That seems to open. Well, now I've goofed up everything. Whoops, I think I've even lost the chart. All right, so uh, let's put on pause for a minute. Rick, let me uh, let me bring over the live charts. So remember, the whole point of uh, analyzing the market trend is to uh, – whoops, let me do this. Uh, what was I thinking? Oh, oh, is that the first step before doing any scanning at night is to evaluate which way you think the market's going. If it's going up, you're probably scanning more for the long positions. Obviously, you want to go with the flow. If the market's heading down, you want to scan more for the uh, short positions. If you can't tell which way the market's going, now you're probably going to be scanning for both long and short. There's always going to be good short positions in a bull market. There's always going to be good. Uh, what did I say? There's always going to be good short positions in a bull market. There's always going to be long, good long positions in a bear market. So if the market's moving sideways, you're always going to find good trades in both directions. So knowing the different patterns. And we know what the uh, ramification of the patterns are. Eh, this one is more of a morning star signal with a doji sandwich on the other charts. So a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich we call a morning sandwich or a McMuffin. And it's usually a very high probability trade. But notice what's happening in our recommendation on MTCH. It's broken this downtrending channel with a strong reversal signal. And notice what started this, a hammer signal with a gap up off, kicker type signal off the uh, 50, break, reaching this area, gave us a good price trend. Um, uh, if I'm day trading, I'm usually uh, using the, starting off on the 10 minute chart. That's, that's kind of my bellwether. And that's all up to each individual too, Brian, of how fast you want to trade. Now, if I'm trading the dollar, let's see if this is going to work. If I'm trading the dollar, I might trade off the 15-minute chart because it moves a little bit slower. Whereas if right now we're long uh, soybeans, and we are trading that off the 10-minute uh, chart, notice on the uh, daily chart when it broke through this area, that's where we had our buy stop at uh, 109.20. And the reason for that was on our 10-minute chart, let's see if I can find it. Might not be able to find it. But on our 10-minute chart, uh, Nah, I'm not finding it. But the 10-minute chart has the same patterns. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your breakout. There's when you take your profits. So you can trade on any time frame. This chart looks just like a one-minute chart, a five-minute chart, a uh, daily, weekly, or monthly chart. They all look exactly the same. What are your thoughts on bid-ask spreads? Uh, especially for those who uh, work during the day. Uh, John, when I put out a recommendation, it's based upon a moving through a certain price. So when we recommended MTCH, it was based upon it breaking the $14 area. So all you have to do is put your stop saying, if it moves through 14, buy. Now, a lot of people say, well, 
getting a 1405 or 1410. That we don't care about. We want to see that it's moving in the direction of what the pattern is telling us. And a lot of people, I've heard so many people say, oh, man, I missed that eight-point move because I missed it by 10 cents that it didn't hit my stop. My philosophy is if you see a pattern and it's working, buy it. It doesn't matter whether you paid 14, 1410, 1420, because if our expectation is that if this is wave one and this is wave three and this is going to be a four-point move, it didn't matter whether you bought it at 14, 10, 20, 30, if you're going to come out hopefully at 18, 18, 50. Um, so the bid ask spread doesn't really mean anything. Just put a buy stop. Uh, it's still viable, yes. Because if this is what we can calculate as up, our upside and it's just broken this level, yeah, you can still be buying this one. So we're looking for things where the patterns Here's our bullish harami, little scoop type pattern on American Airlines. Where's our first target? Up here at the 50. Where's our second target? Up here, filling this gap. So the uh, point that we want to try to analyze where the uh, target is, is there's going to be a lot of charts. I say a lot of charts. I'm just going to pick out one. Monsanto. Monsanto right now looks like a good looking chart. But it might move up great, and you only make 4% on that trade. I'd rather find a chart that looks like this, where the move has a 40% upside potential. Does that mean I'm always going to get it? No, but if the chart is telling me that the price is going to move in a certain direction, I'd rather find something when it moves in that direction that makes it worthwhile. Um, okay, and let's see what else we got here. GEF, uh, somebody was asking earlier, when is it time to buy a fry pan bottom? I'm usually looking at right about the same level that it's where it started to start buying. Now, notice what started the uptrend. There's our morning star signal that bounced off the 50, starting an uptrend. Then usually what happens when you get, I say usually, sometimes what happens when you get to the end of a fry pan bottom, you start getting some whipsaw. But. Remember what the fry pan bottom does. It's a buildup of, uh, of investor sentiment ready for a breakout. And ARGS, you can see the same thing happening right here. There's the fry pan bottom. There's the breakout. When they broke out, notice where they pulled back to. Right smack dab to the T-line slash 50. And what did we have today? A bullish harami. What's that tell us? The selling has stopped. You can still be buying this one on positive trading. Now, the use of the T-line, I forgot for you new folks to give you the, uh, oh, the adjunct to the T-line, which is if you see a buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line, with the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability, it's going to come back and test it. So anytime you start moving too far, too fast away from the T-line, now you flip to your 10-minute chart and you start watching to see what your 10-minute chart is telling you. So Lab D, which is telling us right now that the uh, biotechs are starting to sell off, so the uh, short, uh, the bear fund is showing us that we had a little inverted hammer bullish confirmation that we're probably going to see a bounce to the upside, which means the biotechs are going to be selling off a little bit. Um, what is happening with the stochastics at the J-hook? Usually on a J-hook, you know, there was the start of a J-hook, your stochastics are going to uh, be hooking at the same time also. I'll have to see if I can find a J-hook in here somewhere. This is somewhat of a J-hook, but this is where you observe the obvious. Notice when you came out of this slow fry pan bottom where it broke out, when it gapped up through the resistance level. Strong price move. 
So you started seeing selling. And when the selling occurred, where did it move to? This is why when we do our, uh, well, we should have done one, why the uh, moving averages act like magnets. Because if you're a major buyer, an institutional buyer, and you're ready to buy the stock, but you see it's fading back, where do you think you're going to start really looking to see if it's supporting? You're probably not going to start buying until it shows it's supporting off the 50. Then you start jumping in. So that means there's really no strong buying until it gets to that support level. And we can see exactly what happened when it got here. There was our best friend signal, which tells us if this is wave one, this is wave two, wave three should be the same magnitude as wave one. The T-line, yes, is the 8 exponential moving average. Oh, yeah, in the members area, there's uh, on our website, we've got about, uh, I think, close to 1,300 pages now of information on candlesticks. A lot of it is current running information, which is the, the scanning formulas, uh, the analysis of the markets, that sort of thing. Uh, and this is kind of what we call the bobble. So they come up, hit a resistance level, and then come back up through the resistance level, creating a J-hook type pattern, telling us if this starts trading positive, that this wave right here and this wave right here will be approximately the same. So... The uh, J-hook pattern has uh, implications to it, which is a wave one, wave two, wave three, and wave one and wave three are usually about the same. Uh, AG, the, the uh, gold stocks are all acting well. Uh, again, when they gapped it up, told us we're probably heading to the top of the trend channel. SA, we looked at earlier, notice how it's broken out through this downtrending channel, and how did it start up? Again, with a kind of spinning top doji gap up. Telling you there's going to be some strong buying. Uh, we did AU. The gap ups right now are telling us that more than likely, if you drew a line right through the tops, that's probably your target. Now, will it get there? Don't know, but that's at least our target. When it does get there, now we can become a little bit more conscious of what type of signals happen once it got to that level. If we see shooting star or a doji, we're more apt to take uh, 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 take profits. Uh, Diane, yes, and that's going to be a function of tomorrow when you wake up, take a look at what gold is doing. Right now it's trading off a little bit in after hours, but if it's trading up tomorrow, especially up above this downtrending channel, continuing this uptrend, yeah, you still want to be buying the gold stocks. And let's see, another one was AGI. Still on an uptrend. I would say GG. This one I'd still be a buyer of. Marathon Oil. This is what we call, well, this is, again, notice how when it broke out through the bobble. But this is why we can see what type of, this is the difference between a bar chart and a, uh, a candlestick chart. We can see once it got up to this level, when it gapped up there, they started selling it off. So what did that tell us about the breakout area? It told us they weren't breaking out. It's time to take some profits. But what's our simple rule? As long as it stays above the T-line and we're in an uptrend, so we just watch and see if it does a little J-hook pattern and comes up through this area the second time. Soda. This is also kind of a uh, J-hook pattern. J-hook pattern doesn't have to be a hook. It could be a wave one, a wave two. Wave three. So if this is wave one, wave three is going to be approximately the same. So when I know it's approximately the same, and I'm up here in the overbought area, I don't know what this. This one from 14 to let's say 18 and a half, four and a half points. That means from 18 and a half to 22 and a half, 23. I'm almost there. I get a little bit more uh, diligent as far as 
watching for cell signals. And SGRY, there's that fry pan bottom. So very simple rule of fry pan bottom. You can stay long as long as you don't see a cell signal and a close back below the T-line. The fry pan bottom, that buildup of investor sentiment, you couldn't trade this the whole time, but as soon as it started curling up and breaking out, that's when you knew the, the enthusiasm was coming back into that, that position. All right, so I guess that's about all. Uh, uh, Rick, if you want to do the double line, we'll do a few, uh, look at a few stocks. Um, kind of a little mini scoop pattern on American Airlines. At first watch here, you can see there's a wee little teeny gap right above the uh, 200. Las Vegas, whoops, Las Vegas Sands, another fry pan bottom. Very simple rule, you stay long. And this is what we call the double doji. Notice how they took it up, did a doji, consolidated it again with a doji. Makes it very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying immediately because it tells you the consolidation is over. We saw that same thing in one of our recommendations, BVN. We're pulled back and then gapped up, and still in this upward uh, trend channel. Let's see. Amber Combi Fitch, you stay short. Ever since the kicker signal, notice how they opened it here and closed up, up here. The next day they opened it below. The previous day's open and went the opposite direction. Right now, you stay short until you see a buy signal. Whiting is still in this kind of slow fry pan bottom. You stay long. Notice today they opened it right on the T line and started trading up positive, which tells you to stay long in this one. This one, uh, UEC, you see the tremendous consolidation. But you have a doji. Remember what the simple rule of doji is. And it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Same thing in uh, R or U R R E. Took it back up. Big consolidate or big profit taking. If they open this positive, you can start buying. Fit. Nothing here. I mean, this is where you observe the obvious. The trend is absolutely sideways. If I was going to buy it, yeah, I'd have to see. It has a little bit of a signal here, but I'd rather pay for it once it broke out through this level. Right now, it's just telling us there's nothing, no bullish or bearish force to it. TCK, another potential double doji. Now, if this opens lower, remember the simple rule of doji. They got up here. If they fail, by opening it lower, that means they're probably bringing it back to test the T-line. And SPY, just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line again. There's your best friend. There's your gap out to, to this level. And right now, they haven't been able to close it below the T-line. You just stay long. And SPHS. All you can do is stay long on this one. I can't see what the volume is, but I would be a buyer of this one if it came up through the uh, the 50, because that basically tells you they weren't closing below the T-line at all. Whoops. The mouse pad is out of whack here. Yelp. Low curve, fry pan bottom type pattern. All you can do is stay long. On the Dow today, there wasn't wasn't there a sell signal of a gap down, followed an up day and a doji day.
there wasn't really a cell signal, but you do have a bearish Harami, or a, a bearish Harami, but your stochastics are still heading up. You're still above the T line. So because you did a doji today, makes it a very simple process. If they open this and start trading positive, you're uptrending in progress. If they open it lower, that means there's some more consolidation uh, going on after, again, with a simple rule that they're going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Tesla looks like it's trying to pull back to the T line. Just watch to see if it bounces back up off of there. Basically, your uh, uh, bobble pattern. DBA, you're starting to move away from the T line. If if uh, and you not quite a dark cloud. Remember, a dark cloud needs to close more than halfway down this candle. I hate that up there. But if this opened lower tomorrow, I'd be have to take profits with the anticipation they're going to bring it down and test the T line. The reason for that is. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. When you start seeing gap ups in the overbought condition, start watching for your profit taking. CNX, you had a left right combo on yesterday. Today they opened it lower, told you you should close them immediately. <clears throat> the only way to stay in is it had to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. Apple, you can see that it's trying to do a J-hook pattern, but at this point, I wouldn't be buying it until they do get it up above the 50. That would tell me the J-hook pattern has broken out. Some of the other biggies like Amazon, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Netflix has been the weak sister. Right now, you shouldn't be long. And I'd be ready to go short if it opens weaker tomorrow. Then you'd have your bearish doji sandwich in progress. Uh, the 20 year bonds have been steadily moving up. This means interest rates are going lower. Right now I just stay long until you see a confirmed sell signal. And target stays short. You can see how it came up to the T line. You've been in a downtrend. So you've got wave one. Wave two, dumpling top, if it opens lower, you could be heading into wave three, especially if it breaks through this level right here. Uh, CLRB tried to show some strength today, but gave up the ghost near the end of the day. So this would have been a case where we wanted to see it break out through this level. If it closed up here, I would have stayed long. But the fact that they closed it right back down in the middle part of this wedge formation Told you to get back out of it. There wasn't anything there yet. Twitter's been running into trouble. Another one where when it got up here to the top of the uh, the uh, fry pan bottom, you started seeing sell signals. That told me now I've got the possibility of another wave to the downside. I'd be ready to go short on weakness on this one. U.S. Steel. Stay long until you see a sell signal. I'd use the 50-day moving average right now as my stop. And again, that's part of the visual analysis saying where would this have to move to tell me that uh, uh, the, the price uh, had, or the bears were in control. ENB, stay long. Now, you did have kind of a sell signal up here. They tried to bring it back up. I would use today's open as my stop. If they were able to bring it back down th through that level, pretty much tells me the bears are trying to take it down to test the T-line and maybe lower. Another one, Monster Worldwide. Notice where it failed, right smack dab at the 50. Now, you're still in the fry pan bottom trajectory because you're still up above the T-line, but there's one simple thing you have to look for. This has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. If it does, now you've probably got a bobble in, in place. If you're long, you stay long. If you're looking to buy, you wait for it to come back up through the 50. If it comes up through the 50, the probabilities are that the J-hook pattern breakout is in progress. STZ, uh, no, I wouldn't be short uh, right now. Um, 
because you did see uh, you, you're in the oversold area. You're seeing a, a spinning top bullish confirmation. Right now, that's a high risk short. I would be, I probably wouldn't be long or short, but just because of the tra trajectory of this one. In fold, this one I'd be more apt to be short. Remember, the bigger the signal, the more compelling. There's been a change of investor sentiment. I would think that somewhere down here is your next target, the bottom of this channel. There's this Morgan Stanley. Yes, you can stay short on this one. Notice today you had a bearish doji sandwich. And a doji sandwich is a bearish candle, a doji. And then remember, they move it in the direction how they open it after a doji. And did the candle about the same magnitude as that candle? That tells you there's more downside. First of all, they couldn't hold at the 50, and right now you're on this support level right here. So if they open it lower, that's telling me they're they're heading down for the next support level. All right. Let's see. XRT. Yes, you can short this one on weakness tomorrow. Your evening star signal trading back below the uh, T line. Uh, the Russell, uh, very simple. It has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, they're at least pulling back to test the T-line. Uh, very rarely, if I was trading the E-minis and the, and the YMs, that I would hold them overnight. Usually I'm day trading those. I say usually. I haven't traded them for a while. But if I'm day trading something, Specifically, like an index, unless it was showing something very compelling going into the close, I'll usually close it out and see what happens the next day. BXP, big bullish engulfing. This one you can stay long with the first anticipated target is the bottom of this trend channel. Let's see if it's going to come up and act as uh, resistance. CLF backed off a little bit today. Barry Sharami. Makes it very simple also. It has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, they're backing it off to the T line. Remember, Barry Sharami tells you the buying has stopped. Uh, let's see. SPHS hit 288 after hours. All right, so I mean something was happening there. And BHP, uh, that's pretty ugly. I wouldn't be long or short this one. Maybe maybe I'd be short, but I didn't anticipate this is uh, all the further, or that's my support level. So if it opened lower tomorrow, you can be shorting it with kind of the, the gap down. I take it this must be an, uh, an ADR because of the gapping. What are your thoughts on moving average crossovers? I uh, don't pay any attention to them. We're not trading the moving averages. My number one criteria is what is the signal telling me, and is it being confirmed? Everything else is just uh, added fluff. CF, oh, boy, nothing of any great consequence here. If you're shorting it, you just watch to see what happens once it gets to the bottom of the trend channel, which isn't that far away. Cyprus. This one you can get ready to go short on a weaker open tomorrow. Very stogy sandwich breaching the T-line to the downside. Dust. Dust right now, you stay short. And nugget. To stay long, uh, the, I guess the one worry of Nugget is it moves around so fast uh, that sometimes they open it five points lower and take it back up or open it up five points and take it down immediately. Five and below, another bearish Harami. If I was long... I'd have my sell stop just below today's low. It shouldn't move back in that direction. XLE, 
kind of same scenario. It needs to stay above the key line. Facebook, Facebook haven't traded for a while just because there's absolutely no direction. You're in a big wedge formation. Blackberry. Another one that you get ready to go short if it opens lower because you had your doji, doji, gap down, stochastics rolling over. If they open this lower, first target is going to be the 50-day moving average. Alcoa. Alcoa is still caught in this little channel. So if you like it, you can stay long as long as it doesn't close below the key line. It's just not going to be a very pro prolific mover for you. Oops. U.S. Steel did a Harami doji. Makes it very simple. If they open it lower, they're probably bringing it at least back to the 50, if not the T line. You want to see this one open positive and trade positive to stay in it. But right now, I'd probably use today's low as my stop or the 50. If uh, I wouldn't want to see it close back below the 50. Oh, target, stay short. Apple, I wouldn't go long until it gets up through the 50. This is being recorded. ERX, same scenario. This one needs to open positive and stay above the T-line to stay long. And FAS, that's not a great looking chart. Just not a good trend to it. Uh, you could probably, yeah, it's just not a, it's a very slow, uh, uh, chart. I, you know, when I hesitate that much, my first thought is go someplace else. Don't trade that one. Priceline also has the prospect of failing right up here at this level. Coming back down and testing the T line. Uh, what was, uh, I was a stockbroker for eight years and I was the worst investor in the world. And I was giving people advice on how to invest their money. I got out of the business, um, it was a Jivo. Oh, right now I do the 10 minute chart, but if it opened lower, it's coming back down to test the T line. But when candlesticks came along, I kept looking at it and kept saying, this makes sense. And the more I looked at it, the more sense it made. So what it boils down to is the candlestick charts are merely the graphic depiction of what's actually going on in investor sentiment. So this gets you away from even having to listen to anybody out there. And just let the charts tell you what to do. I'd be ready to short Chipotle on any weakness, especially if they broke this level, because you can see what the trend is doing. Your next target would probably be down here close to 400. And Goog, Goog is still in this trend channel. And you can draw a line here and see another parallel line. That's what your trend channel is. So from what it looks like, it may come back down a little bit more before heading back up again. Zag needed to show strength today, which it didn't do. It's right on the T-line. Whoops, no, it wasn't. I would have been out of this one today. It needed to open positive and trade positive. The fact that they opened or immediately sold it off, told you there's not any strength there. Go on to something else. Three bars is good. It is if you can't get drunk at one bar. MTN. All right. Now you be careful because where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. It closed up here. I would probably put a sell stop right here. If it comes back down through that direction, the profit taking has started. Uh, RAM, the most basic element of the charts are what are the signals telling you and where are they? Everything else beyond that is noise. 
Let's see. I think we did CNX. This one uh, you should have been out of on yesterday. Definitely out on the lower open today. Square. Nothing there. You can see there's no direction. If I was going to do anything, if they open this week or tomorrow, I might start shorting it. SWN. This one, you stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. Yesterday would have been scary, and this is a case where when it opened lower today, if I was long, I would have closed it out. But then as it came back up through the T-line, I would have bought it back. So I may have missed out on $0.35, cents, but I'm looking at it on the basis that if this is my classic, a fry pan bottom, breakout, J-hook pattern, that that $0.35 cents is going to be offset by the next $3.50 more to the upside. And one more. Uh, this one's a toughie to trade. I wouldn't be trading this one long or short just because you can't really identify what it's doing. So when you can't identify what it's doing, go on to something else. Okay, just one last reminder. Again, the thing that really helped me become a much more – going from being the worst investor in the world to – constantly taking money out of the markets now, was seeing the candlestick signals from start to finish. And that's what basically our uh, private training sessions up at Cuca Lake do. We start with the 12 major signals, start with a doji, and go right on through the, the uh, patterns, the quantified uh, signals, which ones are the best, where your stop losses are, where your entry strategies are to improve the probabilities of being in the uh, right trade, and then scanning for the best trades, Cuca Lake, New York. Yes, the Finger Lakes. Uh, it's two and a half days where you get a butt sore, brain frying uh, session. Um, you don't have to worry about meals. You don't have to worry about rooms. The rooms are right there at the house on the lake. We sit there at the screens overlooking the water. Uh, we go to nice restaurants, so it's the type of weekend or type of three days training where when the session is over in the morning, everybody doesn't disappear. We all go to lunch together. We're still talking investments. We go to dinner together, and then a couple of sessions we've had, we went to dinner and came back and spent another two or three hours at the uh, start. So basically, if you understand or you think you understand candlesticks, but it's just not quite fitting, this is where you see everything in a chronological order, and it's the biggest, uh, I want to say, feedback that I get from people at these sessions is the light finally went on. Now I understand it completely, and you'll have a completely different perspective. Um, so with that, all right. If you yeah, uh, have had a few people email me, email me, Steve, at candlestickforum.com if, if you want to get some more information. No, Mike, I moved back up to Pittsburgh, so I live just north of Pittsburgh right now because it was too hot to drive convertibles in Houston. So with that, everybody have a good evening. I know you're all rooting for the Penguins, so I'll let you go watch them. All right, everybody, have a good evening.